in the name of Jesus. Amen. And he said to them, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, you are the Christ. Dear saints of God, this is what we confess. You, Jesus, are the Christ. You are the one rejected by the chief priests and teachers of the law. You are the one crucified under Pontius Pilate. You are the one who died and was buried. You are the one who on the third day rose again. Jesus is the suffering servant. He is the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. He is my holiness before God. He is my forgiveness before God, my justification before God, and my sanctification. Yours too. His death is your standing before God. His death alone. His death is your righteousness before God. His death is your mercy, of, is the mercy of God. His righteousness, his resurrection is your life before God. His resurrection is your justification before God. That's what it means that Jesus is the Christ. It means that God has crucified his son on the cross to save you. It means that Jesus kept the law fully for you and then suffered the punishment for your sins. It means that God has mercy on you. He forgives your sins. He washes your sins away and feeds you life, not because you change or get better or, or have everything together, but because Jesus is the Christ and he died to save you. You can't go to hell because Jesus is the Christ. Your sins can no longer harm you because Jesus is the Christ. Your deep, dark, secret sins can't damn you because Jesus is the Christ. Repenting of your sins, you are forgiven because Jesus is the Christ. God won't judge you. He won't damn you because Jesus is the Christ. He won't punish you on the last day because Jesus is the Christ. You can't go to hell ever because Jesus is the Christ. Now dodge this gospel, tweak it, pull back on it, you've gone too far, rein it in, make it more palatable, or repair it with some life-altering exhortations, and you are no longer confessing Jesus. You are no longer a mouthpiece of God, you are a mouthpiece of Satan. Look at St. Peter. He's at the top of the class with the right answer. And then, after he's confessed Jesus as the Christ, his love for Jesus and his desire to keep him from the cross made him a mouthpiece of Satan. Get behind me. You have not in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Peter denied Jesus meaning, being the Christ, meaning that he, went to, he was going to go to the cross for him. Never such a Christ Jesus. Dear saints of God, this means that a preacher is only as good as the Jesus he preaches. If he preaches Jesus as the Christ, the one who died to save you, and that he saves you not because you have and haven't done something, but solely by his death and resurrection, that man is a faithful Petra, a rock. If the preacher doesn't, no matter how many friends he has on Facebook or how many pastors adore his sermons, if his preacher preaching is more concerned with your life changing, or if he pulls back on Jesus saving you totally and leaves something up to you, if he turns the gospel into a mere step in the change of your behavior, like now that Jesus has saved you, you can get the works that Jesus really wants you to do done. If the preacher makes 99% of salvation, Jesus, and 1% your decision, your life, your commitment, or any per per percentage other than all Jesus, or if the gospel in this preacher's mind isn't preached unless he tells you how to get better, it doesn't matter if it's St. Peter himself. He is speaking Satan talk to you. And we must repent, dear friends, for we are inclined towards such preaching. Our old Adam loves this false gospel. Not because our old Adam loves Satan, but because our old Adam wants to save himself or herself. We know how to do something other than trust Jesus to be our Christ. I can change my life. I can fix it. 
I can get better if you give me a chance. I'm doing some good works. I can do more. I can make it better. Repent. Repent of tickling your ears with such lies. Repent of judging preachers on who they are rather than what they say. Repent of trying to fix your stuff on your own. You can't fix your sins on your own. And even if you could, you wouldn't save yourself. Believe this gospel. Trust it. Trust that his suffering and death really is the answer for everything in your world. Believe that your baptism really does save you and that you would have to leave Jesus in order to not be saved. Know that the body and blood of Jesus really will keep you steadfast in the one true faith unto life everlasting. For the cross of a Christian isn't that being a Christian is such a buzzkill because all the other people get to have fun and you don't. No, the cross of a Christian is to confess this, this Jesus as the Christ who saves you. To look at the world and say, I have no hope, no forgiveness, no good works, no salvation apart from Christ and him crucified. Die to everything, that you, you, every, everything else in this world and live in Jesus alone. For whoever finds his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake in the gospel shall find eternal life. His gospel will change you. His forgiveness will enliven you to this confession, to live in this confession. His cross isn't your cross. It's his cross. He died on it. He rose with him. You rose with him. And you will live forever in him. For the gospel is everything, everything, from the reason why the world stays together to the, the reason why we have hope in a fallen world to the cause of all the good things that we do for each other. Jesus is the Christ, holds everything together, even you and me. Jesus is the Christ when things are great, sunshine and happiness. When all is perfect, you are saved in Jesus alone. And when your heart stops beating, when things bottom out for you, when you're just not in a right place, or when you are all alone and, hurt and hurting, when it rains in California, and all you, all you will then have when everything else is lost is Jesus is the Christ. And in that moment, you'll have everything in those four words. You are the Christ, Jesus. You died for me, you rose for me, you lived for me, and I died and rose with you. You are the only God who can save me, and I am saved in you alone. In the name of Jesus.